So a few months ago, Sega announced Sonic Boom. This was going to be a TV show, a franchise of toys, and of course, the video game. As you can see, this worked very well for many, many companies, and it's pretty easy to see why, as somebody at Sega said, they wanted Sonic to be like Hello Kitty in terms of merchandising and merchandise sales. However, Sonic Lost World wasn't good for the strategy. It got poor Metacritic scores, it sold poorly, it was on a console that was dying off and had a small user base, and it was a terrible game overall. For everything from the character designs, which have to be essential to sell merchandise, to the gameplay, which can be frustrating, especially if you're giving the game to a kid. However, Sega had another attempt to make Sonic relevant again. Sonic Boom. The game Sonic Boom and the series Sonic Boom is pretty much, as confirmed by Sega, an alternate continuity of Sonic, with radical character designs from the past... The CryEngine 3 powering the game, graphics that looked much better than many Wii U games, and a whole new developer. I mean, this game wasn't being developed by Sonic Game, it's not right now. It's being developed by Big Red Button, a team of ex-Naughty Dog employees. You know, the company who made Jack and Daxter that game, which, and, and, uh, and Crash Bandicoot. The company who made those games is developing this game. So what could possibly go wrong? I mean, people got over the character designs and ended up embracing them a few days after making extremely unfunny jokes about them. And there have been new characters linked and nobody's really responded negativity to them after a while. So what could possibly go wrong with the game itself? Now before I say this next part, keep in mind I'm not trying to say the game will be crappy, a piece of trash, or any of that. But I'm saying the game should be on a lookout. You should watch, take a good look at the game before you buy it, look at Metacritic scores. And of course, if the developers are watching this video, I'd like them to at least listen to some fan feedback. Like, I've heard they've already been listening to fan feedback, and that's a good idea if they are, because I really want them to make a good Sonic game. And by fan feedback, I don't just mean complain over little things, I mean feedback that will help improve the game. So anyways, let me get to the story. A few days ago, on a Sonic news site, a picture was posted. This was a cropped version of a picture from a forum showing someone playtesting Sonic Boom in high resolution quality. Nothing was out of the ordinary in this picture, and all it seemed to show was the HUD or heads up display for the new Sonic game in good quality. I mean, there could be nothing wrong with that, right? However, anybody with an image viewer or a web browser or a cell phone where they can pinch to zoom could see something in the corner. In the corner was debug information, one of which happened to be for a frame rate of the game. The frame rate of the new Sonic game, 15 frames per second. Now, keep in mind, Sonic is meant to be a game about speed, and yet the new Sonic game was shown to be running in this screenshot at 15 FPS, or 15 frames per second. The last Sonic games to run at such low frame rates, Shadow the Hedgehog and Heroes on the PlayStation 2. Both of these are not known for being good Sonic games, and while they have their fans, most of them probably didn't play the PS2 versions, because the PS2 versions run at a terrible frame rate, look terrible, and play t even worse than the GameCube versions. Now, this wouldn't have been too much of a problem had it not been in an era where games have come up time and time again with poor frame rates that are never bumped up and still feel like they were polishing them but forgot to polish the games off before the game came out and this is a development build but you've got games like titanfall in the open beta which everybody could download it ran at a stuttery frame rate on the xbox despite respawn saying it was going to be 60 frames a second the final game still ran at a stuttery frame rate and digital foundry and others have shown this battlefield 4 advertises 60 on next gen consoles 
ran below that on both the Xbox One and the PS4. Aliens Colonial Marines, this is from Sega. It was shown to be this amazing game with amazing graphics when it came out. Not only did it look terrible, but it also came out that Gearbox actually outsourced the game to another developer, unknowingly to Sega and anybody watching. Pokemon X and Y looked like crap. People were saying it was going to get better. It said it was a development build and it wasn't representative. Game comes out. Looks like crap. Watch Dogs isn't even out. Already being accused of being a downgrade due to the fact that PS4 footage from the E3 and from the current one looks like a downgrade due to hardware limitations. Eventually, the developers had to say something. Halo 2 had this cool for 2004 E3 demo, which was amazing and wowed everybody, and was on many copies of Halo 1 that were released after the demo was released and shown at E3. What happened? The game was nothing like the E3 demo. Bioshock Infinite released didn't look anything like the E3 demo. Or is the most relevant example for this video? Sonic 06, with its infamous closed door trailer. It ended up being a train wreck and released to the point where it was worse than even many Sonic games released up to that time. Now, these games all have one thing in common. They were announced to be this great big game and by the time they came out, something along the line happened, and they had to get downgraded. Now, some of these ended up being fun games, like Halo 2 wasn't the best Halo, but it was fun. While others, like Sonic 06, Pokemon X and Y, and Titanfall, ended up being pure mediocrity. And you can go on message boards, and you'll see words such as bullshot. Not the swear word, but a combination of that swear word and screenshot, or downgrade, which the word explains itself. You'll see those words thrown around a lot on message boards, forums, um, comment sections, um, YouTube ranters, you'll see those words a lot. And it's easy to see why. Sonic Boom hasn't had much gameplay shown other than that quick teaser trailer, from what I can tell. I mean, we didn't even get a glimpse of the HUD or Heads Up display until that screenshot got leaked. And there hasn't even been a gameplay trailer, like I said. And while features have been announced, the proof is in the pudding. There's a differences between features that will actually be in the game and features promised. Now, I wouldn't blame this too much on, re on Big Red Button, as they are trying to make a game for a dated console, which despite coming out in 2012, still uses the GameCube Wii architecture, still uses a Power PCG 3, was designed to be 100% compatible with software for both consoles. The problem is, it ended up being only about as powerful as a 360 with even a weaker CPU due to its being based on the PowerPCG3 line, which was released with old Macintoshes. You know, the old beige Macintoshes, the last of those Macintoshes had the G3, and the first fruity colored ones. I'm talking old stuff. And hackers who have hacked the Wii U, they found out why it's using a PowerPCG3 design, which is, as I said, was due to backwards compatibility, and they've confirmed it. Now, Nintendo hasn't officially confirmed anything, and neither has any developer due to the fact that they're under NDAs, but various developers have said this, that the Wii U CPU is weak and underpowered from DICE to, with their infamous April Fool's joke which caused tons of people to throw a fit, to um, EA, someone at EA Sports, to somebody at... Uh, Koei to somebody at to somebody at Avalanche Studios and other developers which have made games they've pretty much come out against the Wii U. So I wouldn't blame it 100% on Big Red Button, but let's get back to the game and features. The game lacks any sort of online co-op. In an era where games have that as a standard feature, like Castle Crashers, like 
uh, Alien Hominid or whatever that game's pronounced, like um, like Halo, like Call of Duty with its zombies mode, and at one point it even had a campaign co-op with World at War. It had, I mean, you've had um, all sorts of games with co-op pretty much have it online. This game is being funded by a major developer, and it doesn't have co-op. Even Sonic 4 Episode 2, that has co-op. This game doesn't. And this really isn't a good sign. But a most telling sign that there might be problems with this game in the end? Big Red Button is hiring. Now, what could be wrong with a hiring application? I mean, it's pretty normal for many developers to hire people if they need them to help develop the game. Well, just take a look at what they're looking for. One of the bonus requirements is the ability to work under pressure with deadlines. Anyone who's followed Sega knows what happens with Sonic the last time it had rapid deadlines imposed by Sega. The disaster known as Sonic 06. The game that was rushed out of production had tons of glitches. Now I know I'm probably just being a pessimist as they said at Big Red Button somewhere that they were final playtesting the game or something. But, when the game turns out to be mediocre after not showing you what you saw in the trailers, then you start having a major problem. Especially when you see developers such as, uh, I mean, movie studios not pre-screening a movie, game developers not sending people review copies ahead of time, like in the past with some Sonic games. I mean, look at Sonic Adventure 2, that re-release, they didn't send review copies, and it ended up getting a mediocre score, or... Other games like that where they don't send develop, I mean, publishers review copies when they think it's going to get a bad Metacritic score, or nor do they offer pre-screenings because they think it's going to be bad. That's a bad sign. And when they're not showing people gameplay of it, that's another bad sign. I mean, it's only a few months to release. What could hurt by showing gameplay? And also... When you hear about frame rate issues when it's only a few months to being released, as I've heard rumors it's going to release in a few months, that's not a good sign. And frame rate really does affect games. Just try playing Shadow or uh, Heroes on the GameCube and then the PS2. You'll see what I mean. And honestly, I want this game to be good, but I can't when the signs aren't looking toward it being good. I mean, look at the Sonic Cycle. What happens after people get excited after the reveal? The same thing always happens. People's info starts to get leaked out about how the game might not be that good. And I know and I know at this point I'm probably just being a pessimist, but what happened the last time a third party developed a Sonic game? Bioware, they were known for making good games, people were excited. It turned out to be trash. I'm not trying to kill hype too much, but this is just some observations I've noticed. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more thoughts on this issue.